right, welcome back. Question 35, a standing vertical jump. I think that was a hop, but whatever. Basketball player Daryl Griffith is on record as attaining a standing vertical jump of 1.2 meters, four feet. Holy crap. This means that he moved upward by 1.2 meters after his feet left the floor. That's kind of what jumping straight up means. Griffith weighed 890 newtons, which is 200 pounds. Question A, what was his speed as he left the floor? Question B, if the time of the part of the jump, if the time of the part of the jump before his feet left the floor was 0.3 seconds, what was his average acceleration, magnitude and direction while he pushed against the floor? And C, draw his, bo his free body diagram in terms of the forces of, on the diagram. <clears throat> what was the net force on him using Newton's law and the results of part B to calculate the average force he applied to the ground? All right. Average. Average force. Okay. So, we're going to start over here. I'm going to be looking way back over there. Just don't let it bother you. So, this is for question 35. V sub zero is going to equal zero. This is at the max. Okay, so at max. We know that a sub y is equal to negative uh, 9.8. That's meters per second squared. And we know that y minus y sub zero is going to be 1.2 meters. Okay, so we're going to take v sub y squared is going to be equal to v sub zero y squared plus two times a sub y All right, that is what we're looking for right here. So we do V sub zero Y, and that's going to be equal to the square root of negative two times by negative 9.8 times by 1.2. That's gonna give us grand total of 4.85 meters per second. Okay. I uh, apologize, this was A. Now for B. We're looking for average acceleration. A sub A B is equal to V sub Y minus V sub zero Y, and that's going to be all divided by the time. So if we put that all into it, we get 4.85. There is a five. And that's meters per second. That's going to be minus zero all over 0 0.300 seconds, which gives us a grand total of 16.2 meters per second squared. Okay. So that's the answer for B. So for C, oh, I'm 
down and figure I'm not in the way. You can see it. At least I put my head there. All right, so we know that mass is equal to the weight divided by the gravity. And let's say we got 890 newtons. That's going to be divided by 9.8. That's meters per second squared. Which is the same as, yep, 90.8 kilograms. Okay. So now we've got this cool little gadget here. I love these. They're great. The sum, friction supply, is, of course, mass times acceleration supply. Okay, so if that's the case, then you got the F average, and that's going to be equal to the mass times the gravity plus the acceleration average uh, times Y. Okay, so we got F sub AV. And that's equal to do, 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 do. plug in our 90.8 kilograms. That's going to be times by 9.8 meters per second squared plus 16.2 meters per second squared. Gives us our average. I want to sit down for this. Two thousand three hundred and sixty newtons. That's a lot. Okay. So if that's the case. So now we need to do our free body diagram, right? Well, he's basically starting here and he's going straight up, okay? And the amount of force that he's putting down is the 2,360 newtons. He's going straight up, there's no lateral movement. So there's your free body diagram.